For the longest time, when fans would reflect on the downfall that was Alien 4 Season 3, one episode would immediately come to mind. Poop. Shiny poop. Solid gold poop. Alien poop. Waste poop. Like make a number two. That's right, it's finally time to talk about the gold poop episode. Hey everyone, Kuro the Artist here, and welcome back to another Ben 10 Breakdown. Now, as I love to keep reiterating, I never actually think a bad episode of Season 3 is any of the writers or even the crew's fault. As we all tirelessly know by now, they were forced by the network to change the season. This episode was written by Eugene Sun, who also wrote Above and Beyond, one of my personal favorite episodes of this season, and regarded as one of the best episodes of Alien Force as a whole. So from here on out, no hate towards Eugene. In a 2017 interview with Eugene, he speaks about how he was brought onto the show for an approved comic book style story in a similar vein to the Hulk's struggle to lock himself away to protect himself from the world, which is presumably the original Kevin's mutation story that was later reworked into Ultimate Alien. However, this is when the network backtracked and they needed a new story. When brainstorming new ideas, Eugene pitched the idea of an alien spring break inspired by the cheap airfare in England allowing students easier temporary travel. To quote Eugene, we were trying to figure out out what was the unique hook about these aliens? A guy in the room said, it's gotta be something like, they poop gold. And Dwayne says, why can't they poop gold? We wondered if that was too goofy, but Dwayne said, no, it's weird. We can do weird. The network killed our last story, and we're going to give them aliens pooping gold, so they have no one to blame but themselves. Now, I'm not saying this episode's sole purpose was a deliberate screw you to the network, but more of an example of how the network's original demands can still go wrong and not produce what they wanted, i.e. emulating the classic series. And I can't imagine the writers would even touch a story like this if they were not instructed to, at least not in a way that was this ridiculous. Because of its absolutely insane premise, back in the day this was regarded as one of, if not the worst episode of all time, and I definitely should shared that view for a while. But upon these breakdown rewatches, I feel like this episode may not actually be as bad as it seems, and there's definitely episodes far worse than this to come. <coughs> If this is your first breakdown and you're curious about how my rating system works, there's a detailed description down below, along with a link to all of my previous breakdowns, but by all means watch this one first, I'm sure you'll still enjoy it. I also just started streaming on Twitch on the reg, it's gonna be Tuesdays at 2pm EST for now, but the times may change, and I already played through the first part of Protector of Earth. That makes no sense. I'm not even near it. For now, the VODs will be Twitch exclusive, with a chance they might be uploaded on our second channel later on, but for now just make sure to follow us and subscribe to our Twitch down below so you don't miss out. I'll be playing through all of the Ben 10 games and then doing some drawing streams as well. Also with the multiverses hype on the rise again, don't forget to show your support for getting Ben 10 in the game by using the Ben 10 for multiverses hashtag on Twitter and share your thoughts in their official Discord and Reddit which will be linked down below. Remember to be vocal but respectful. On September 29th, 9th, 2009, Eugene Sun's Fool's Gold had aired on Cartoon Network. Aliens arrive on Earth to the town of Walton for their spring break, where the town provides them endless popcorn in exchange for their droppings, which turns to gold after consuming said popcorn. As their vacation comes to a close, one of the aliens went missing, and it's up to the trio to find him before the rest of their species returns to school. <laughs> Oh shit. Got ourselves a combination of simulated CG smoke with traditionally animated ones. But in motion, it all blends together pretty well. Red and silver, big surprise. Oh yeah, this just reminded me that these things are somewhat gremlin-esque. Maybe this is the one that I should have collabed with Ash on. He's a big fan of gremlins. Keeping it eerie. I wouldn't be surprised if some of these cornstalk elements are reused from Alan's farm. They fade in from the background pretty well. These designs are all right. Would have been nice to have some variety between them, but not really needed for an episode like this. Good to see humans are normalized to the idea of aliens. 
Is this Helen and Manny's base? It is indeed. Or at least a reused background asset from it. They also use this in Above and Beyond too. You want us to go where? A little town called Walton. Grandpa Max has become like the mission assignment person now. Whatever keeps him in the series, I guess. Every 17 years, college students from another planet land there to blow off steam for a week. You already see Kevin messing around with the locket in the background. And one of the aliens has gone missing. You know, I think this map interface is reused from all that glitters. Aha, two for two. Somehow this red circle gave it away. I need you three to go find him. From what we got in War of the Worlds and Vengeance of Vilgax, it seems like the plumber's helpers would have been Max's go-to team to handle something like this. But I guess they gotta give the main trio something to do in this episode. You know, I've gotten so used to seeing Kevin's CG car that this looked a bit strange to me because it's actually hand-drawn now. Why don't aliens ever go missing any place fun? Slightly different backgrounds than we're usually used to seeing. Nothing spectacular, but it's new. Amateurs. Kevin's like, if this was me, I wouldn't have left a trace. Ow! Stubbed my toe! I want to call Ben out for just walking right into that, but I do that constantly. I stub my toe maybe like three times a week. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> And suddenly, you know, I get not having them drawn on the ground so they can save their reveal for this scene right here. But it still bugs me that they're not shown in any other shot until the characters notice them. They look like, um, poop. Characters are drawn a bit wonky in this episode. I try not to commentate too much on off-model characters because I feel like it's just starting to become a run-dry conversation in these breakdowns, but this episode makes for a lot of very weird faces so far. Everyone just looks ever so slightly off. Aw, oh, Kevin, you don't you don't have to do that. Please don't do it. And he does it. Mm, it is gold. You know, because of the way this is shaped, that means the insides of their intestines has to be like hundreds of degrees in order to shape this gold when it comes out of their bodies. That's, you know, that's actually not something I want to think about. Solid gold poop. I mean, it's fascinating, I'll give them that. Now suddenly it's daytime, so they camp out or something. These farmers must be rolling in. Kevin. Get ready for a lot of those jokes. <laughs> These things are always changing size between the whole episode. We're plumbers. <laughs> well, why didn't you say so? Yes, he knows what plumbers are. What can you tell us about the missing alien? <laughs> There's no missing alien. We're still gonna have to look around. At this point, they're following full-on plumber procedure now. They always fluctuate between acting like an actual galactic law enforcement and then just, you know, a bunch of teenagers with some badges. I'm not sure which I prefer. What do y'all think? Let me know in the comments if you guys prefer the team acting more professionally or more by their own freelance nature. I have had, like, so so much popcorn. <laughs> so his phrasing makes it seem like it's a parody of getting stoned, but the visual seems to be referencing alcohol, so they're just keeping this ambiguous. Wayne just filled his swimming pool with popcorn. This guy is definitely wasted though. <laughs> You know, now that I'm an adult and I actually have been drunk before, I do find this a lot more amusing. But initially, I just found these guys very just kind of unintelligent. So the joke didn't quite land with me then. Come on, man. Cool. Party on, Ben. I better go keep an eye on him. So Kevin's the reasonable one now. Pre-season three, it's like the roles would have been reversed. Kevin would go party with the aliens and Ben would want to keep Kevin in check. Were you sent by Max Tennyson? Yeah, almost every frame in this episode kind of looks slightly off model. My name is Orb. All right, now that we're starting to establish some characters, some visual distinction to separate them would have been a little more helpful. But luckily we don't have to focus on too many of them as individuals. So, you know, as long as you're paying attention to their voices, you, you should be good. The the missing alien's a friend of yours? One moment we're stuffing our faces, the next moment he's gone. Yeah man, that happens in college. Backgrounds really aren't that bad so far in this episode. <laughs> You know, realistically, with all the textures and creases on Kevin's body, I wonder if he's getting like popcorn kernels stuck in the wedges of his skin. That's gotta be irritating. It seems pretty laid back for spring break. Ben's must have been to some wild parties. Oof, spoke too soon, Ben. Could be worse. Could be worse, man. This is still pretty bad. Everybody, tip the house! There we go. A lot of spider monkey this season. Maybe to make up for the lack of him the first two. Hold up. I could be wrong, but I think these frames are reused from Inferno when he's whooping on Volcanus. They are. Look at that. In an airing order, these episodes came out one after another. Is that all of them? Spider monkey looks really good in daytime colors. Tipping it is one thing, but they were able to hurl this into the air. 
So Ben got all of them unstuck from his previous webbing and then webbed each one of their hands behind their back individually. Not saying that's unrealistic, that probably just took a while. Busted at spring break. Yeah, I've been there. Man, you only get busted if you get caught, know what I'm saying? Let them go. But look what they did. It's just a little damage. Boys will be boys. Are all of them exclusively male? We make some popcorn. Our entire economy's based on alien poop. I mean, it's not a bad plan. If it wasn't for this guy getting a little greedy, then there's really no harm being done here. I'll go with Ben. Are you avoiding me? No. See how, like, overly muscular Kevin is in this episode? Am I just going crazy? Also, I like the subtle B-plot they have between Kevin and Gwen, but I would've liked a little bit more focus on it to really hammer home the ending payoff. That's the second time you've ditched her. Are you two fighting? Well, I guess this scene right here is gonna flesh it out a bit more. If we were, would I talk about it with you? I mean, y'all had a pretty nice conversation in Don't Fear the Repo, so it's not exactly out of Kevin's wheelhouse to open up to Ben. Damn, now this is a nice house. No way he heard that all the way from here. Please let me go. You're not going anywhere. I've been doing it all week. This man's trapped him in this cage for a week. That's horrible. Be enough to pay off my debt. How are you going to be this rich and still have debts? Like, I swear the richer people get, the more irresponsible they are with their money. Like, it makes sense. I'm just disappointed in that reality. Like, personally, I... I truly feel like no matter how rich I would get, I still wouldn't like be irresponsible with it. But maybe if you grow up in a wealthy lifestyle, you don't appreciate what you have. Eat. I can't eat anymore. Maybe a change of diet. So him being one of his own species, he knows what eating meat does to him. So it sucks that he has to do this, but maybe he thinks doing it will also give him a chance to escape. It's time to go back to school. Two spaceships left. We have something to track him with. Mochi, you're ripping out my headphones. Hold up. There we go. Got him. She's getting really fast at that. Hey, we're back to the orb lighting again. I always thought this was neat. It's the mayor's bar. Come on out. That's a pretty neat looking gun. This is why everybody hates politicians. Because they shoot at the innocent? Nah, they pay other people to do that. Hmm, a new goop animation. Curious why they didn't reuse the one they already had, but this one looks pretty good too. Well, except for this part. It's just like not as good. That was pretty good teamwork. Ben distracts the mayor, Gwen knocks the gun out of the hand, then Kevin destroys the weapon. Where is Decca? Personal gold maker. <laughs> Make. Oh man. Tell me you didn't feed him meat! How nice of him to wait till he's in view of the trio before he starts changing. <laughs> My people can't eat meat. Revert into our primal form. He'll only stay in that form as long as he keeps eating. So eating meat is what triggers the transformation. But from that point forward, he can just eat anything and stay within that form, I believe is what he's saying. He's going to consume all the meat he can find. Okay, it is just all based on meat then. To split into a hundred identical copies. So maybe all of them looking the same is on purpose because that's just how their species works. A lot of the times it just feels like it's just easier on the animators. But here it sounds like they're canonically all the same. Ever wonder what happened to Mars? This used to be called the Popcorn Planet. Now, I've always found that kind of lame. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know why that bothers me as much as it does, but it, it does. I guess it's just because Mars is like one of the only other planets in our solar system that sci-fi is like dignified as having its own ecosystem and culture. You know, almost every version of sci-fi has its own Martians, for example. And it's like Ben 10's Martians was wasted on a throwaway joke in the gold poop episode. I guess we don't really need like some good Martian lore in Ben 10. It's just, I don't know, it, it's a me thing. It's fine. I'm just not a fan. I do like that Big Chill has been subtly flapping his wings to float, though. Oh, they brought back his icy breath. I feel like they don't do that often anymore. Gold is what happens when we eat popcorn. In that form, his waste is uranium-1412. Alright, what? These things are just whatever they need to be, I guess. Unstable radioactive poop? Is there any relationship between uranium and gold? Oh, what do you know? There actually is. So it makes more sense than I would have initially given the credit for. But at least to me, it's not something that would be obvious to have relations with in this episode. It does seem a bit random that like at first they poop gold, but then when they're big they poop essentially bombs Yeesh <laughs> This is kind of funny though. He's at the power plant. I feel like there's so many Ben 10 episodes that are centered around power plants Once he's got enough energy, he's going to divide. Okay. Yeah, so now it's getting a bit random now He can absorb power. I keep wanting to give these things the benefit of the doubt But like they're just constantly adding just random shit to them throughout this episode like oh he can do this But also this and then this whatever. Let's see where it goes Whole town probably lost power now 
Now he's not eating meat. He's eating whatever this is, concrete, metal. The meat has poisoned your mind. This is almost like a pro-vegan episode. Oof, pretty good painted shot of inside of the mouth though. Now this is a build that I haven't seen before. This might be a one episode only type of thing. What else can't you eat? Chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets specifically? That's horrible. I love me some nugs. What about silicon? It's poisonous. It's a good thing he didn't mistransform. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't use the painted mouth shot. Man, he's just letting them get eaten. Very strange solution. Like, I admire Ben's bravery for this to happen, you know? If this was Ditto, all of them would be dead. Echo Echoes are made of silicon. Ben's second alien that's made of silicon. Indestructible super dense silicon, guys! But see, Decca here is chewing, though. Like, the Bens that are inside of him must be in a ton of pain. I forgot there was a lot of forceful vor in this episode. He was just going for it. <laughs> Ugh, poop and vomit in this episode. Gotta love it. That was fast. I am telling everyone, we are never coming back to this dump again! Honestly, good for them. Are you okay? This is from... Aw, I like how it's their previous season looks too. That day at the pier. Now, we've seen Ben and Julie go to the pier, and I'm sure they've gone to the pier themselves off screen. It would have been nice if it was a memory that we were able to see, like have an episode to relate to, but you know, it's it's fine as is. I wanted you to have something to remember, the way I used to be. I don't care what you look like. But I do. Aw, Kevin, starting to go through a lot this season. Now this is something I wish came back. Like it doesn't have to be important, but if they at least showed it every now and then throughout the series, maybe it's because it's tied to like, you know, this episode and people would more or less be all right just forgetting about it. But I feel like this is one of the redeeming qualities of this episode and I would have liked to see its return. Honestly, not as bad as I remembered. This was still during the initial whiplash of the changes of season three. So a lot of my first time memories are polluted by the dissatisfaction with the change of direction of the series. But looking back, it's it's fine. It's all right. Really far from the biggest fan of potty humor, but thankfully it wasn't as overwhelming as it initially felt like. It's really more of just the borderline premise, but then the episode quickly turns into something else. But still, I can only really give the plot of this episode a two. Structurally, it's fine. It does what it needs to do. Like I said in the intro, this episode was kind of just made up on the spot and thrown together to please the network. But it's really not as bad as some of the other ones in this season. The lore of the gremlin people are very random, but objectively so are like a lot of Ben's aliens. We're just more accepting to Ben's aliens because, you know, it's Ben. But these, I don't know, it, it gives me a strange vibe to it. And like I said, I do like the Gwen and Kevin necklace plot. It's kind of just thrown into the episode, but it's also sweet in a way, but not enough to really up this episode any higher than a two. Characterization though, I'll give it a four. Now that we've gotten through the weird personality change of season three, they're starting to get a solid handle on how they're gonna write these characters from now on. And the characters were overall fine in this episode. Mayor Coleman was an all right villain, kind of just the typical stand-in for the white collar, greedy political overlord, which fits for the antagonist role, but nothing notable. Decca and Orr, they just string the plot along, but don't really feel like characters themselves. The main trio are the only ones that really felt like actual characters in this episode, and aside from Kevin's overuse of the poop jokes, they're acceptable in this episode. Nothing I can really complain about. Visuals, it's gonna take a hit though. I'm only gonna give it a one. The gremlin aliens, their designs are all right, but like I said, I would have liked a little bit more diversity. But the animation itself was not nearly as great as some of the highlights of this season, or even Alien Force as a whole so far. There was a select few backgrounds that were pretty good, but the rest are just standard Alien Force, and all of the action set pieces in this episode were kind of underwhelming. But one feels pretty harsh to give this episode. I really didn't want to hate on this episode just for the sake of it being the gold poop episode, but in all fairness, yeah, the, the visuals can only really get a one. Importance, it's gonna get a one just because it is the infamous gold poop episode. And with the Kevin necklace thing, it does start seeding into Kevin's insecurity of his mutations and how he's dealing with it from his own perspective. There's other episodes in this season that does that as well, so you don't really need this one. But with the legacy of this episode in the fandom and the subtle character it gives Kevin. It doesn't hurt to watch it, but one point in importance is more than enough. And entertaining, I'm gonna give it a two. The weird premise does get you curious, but it quickly loses you just as fast as it latches onto you. Once you get over the weirdness of this episode, the rest of it is just things happening. And I would say this is one of the least rewatchable episodes of the season, not just because of the grossness of it being like a poop-centered episode, but just because beyond that, there's really not that much to it. So that's going to give this episode a 10 out of 25. I wanted to be as generous to this episode as I could, but beyond this, I would just be grasping at
at straws. Let's take a look at last week's poll. It looks like the majority vote for everyone's favorite episode of the three was Don't Fear the Repo, and I completely agree. Not only was it the best of the three, it was actually kind of good. For this week's poll, I wanted to ask you, what do you think of Kevin's mutation storyline for season three? Let me know in the community tab when this video goes live. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your weekend. And as always, keep it fizzy.